If you've never experienced a painful emotion such as anger or jealousy or fear or sadness, then you don't need to continue watching this reflection. Okay, you're still with me? Good. There are only two kinds of people who do not experience painful emotions. The psychopaths and the dead. So if once in a while you experience anxiety or frustration or guilt, it's actually a good sign and it means that you're doing just fine. Not a psychopath and very much alive. Meditation teacher Jack Kornfield provides a nice play on Rudyard Kipling's If poem. Kornfield writes, If you can sit quietly after difficult news, if in financial downturns you remain perfectly calm, if you can see your neighbors travel to fantastic places without a twinge of jealousy, if you can happily eat whatever is put on your plate and fall asleep after a day of running around without a drink or a pill, if you can always find contentment just where you are, you are probably a dog. And since this is not dog TV, but happier TV, which is emphatically for humans, it is okay if you find it hard to keep perfectly calm after difficult news or a financial downturn, or do not find contentment always and everywhere. Research by a number of psychologists, including Viktor Frankl and Daniel Wagner, clearly illustrates that if we do not allow ourselves the permission to experience painful emotions when these arise, then we pay a high price. First, these emotions only intensify and overstay their welcome. Paradoxically, it is when we welcome painful emotions, whether through tears or by opening up about them in our journal or by sharing with a friend, it's only then that they become less intense and ultimately dissipate. Second, when we reject painful emotions, we compromise on our ability to experience pleasurable emotions. You see, all of our emotions flow through the same emotional pipeline, and if we block painful emotions from flowing through the pipeline, we're inadvertently blocking pleasurable ones from flowing as well. As Golda Meir, who was Israel's Prime Minister in the 1970s, said, those who don't know how to weep with their whole heart don't know how to laugh either. The third cost of suppressing painful emotions is a physical one. Suppressed emotions are a major cause of, among other things, back pain, ulcer, and a weaker immune system. Giving yourself the permission to be human will make you happier and healthier. And finally, when we suppress emotions, we're more likely to react mindlessly than to act mindfully. For example, suppressing anger is much more likely to lead us to blow up eventually and hurt ourselves and others in the process. To overcome difficulties in our life, it's usually not enough to just feel the pain. We need to take action. However, when we first express our emotions, we're in a much better place, with a clearer mind and a lighter heart, to take action that is most appropriate and helpful. Think about something that is weighing on you. Perhaps you're feeling envy toward a close friend and then feel shame over it. Are you afraid of something and are reluctant to admit it because you feel that you should not be afraid? Are you angry with someone and feel that you should be above that emotion? We all have hidden or suppressed emotions and while it's not easy to uncover them, doing so is vital for both mental and physical health. And then take five minutes to write about something that is weighing on you. Write about the emotion and what you feel about the emotion. Remind yourself that you're human and all emotions are natural and acceptable. If you feel comfortable sharing with another person, be it a friend or a family member, do so. If they immediately give you advice and you only want to share, say it to them, with sensitivity of course. While sharing or writing about painful emotions may initially intensify the feeling, over time, you will most likely feel a lot better. Finally, is there any action that you should or should not take? Keep in mind that there are no good or bad emotions. All emotions are natural and inevitable. What you do with these emotions, whether you suppress them or experience them, whether you mindfully act or mindlessly react, this is what matters in the end.